I guess you've heard the question asked many times, and probably uh, sometimes you didn't want to hear it. But the question, who do you think you are? Who do you think you are? Sometimes when people say that, it's because you've just said something or done something that probably they don't particularly like. You know, and, and they would rather that you didn't do it, or rather that you change. Maybe there's a little bit of sarcasm in there as well. But let's ask the question, who do you think you are? Think about it. Shiloh the king, wonderful. <coughs> wonderful if we can all say that. Wonderful if we can all know that within our hearts and believe it, and be sure that we are child of the king. But you know, when we think of that question, who do we think we are, really, how we think of ourselves will determine much about our life. How we will respond to the various opportunities that's in front of us. How we will respond to the responsibilities that we have. How we respond to the, the temptations that come. And certainly, how do we respond to God? Because if we think we are the all-sufficient one, as some people believe, they depend upon themselves and there's nobody else needed and all of that kind of thing, well then, there's no need for God. And so we can just discard all of that. But I'm going to suggest to you that the Bible will tell you and tell me a lot about ourselves, a lot about our lives, whether we like to agree with what the Bible says or whether we agree with the, uh, the thoughts that's given to us, maybe not. But the Bible is clear in telling, in telling us that there's an awesome God. There is a creator God and part of the process of his creation was that you and I have been created. Mankind didn't come about because of the Big Bang. We didn't come about because of, I don't know, some lower grade animal or something or another uh, decided to, you know, upgrade or do something along that line. But we have been created by an awesome God. Now the Bible is clear about that. There's no doubt about it. There's man in the beginning and it was God's intention that man would be a God that would have fellowship, that would have a close relationship with man. But the other thing that we know about ourselves and mankind is that we are sinners, everyone. God designed that he would have fellowship, but then we wanted to go our own way. We weren't willing to follow what God had intended. And so we said, well, okay, I want to do things my way. And we did. And even today, that's the process we go through. We don't have to go back and look at Adam and say, well, it was all this all the way back there. Because, you know, you or I know better than Adam. No better whatsoever. We still want our own way. We want to do our own thing. We are still filled with self-righteousness. God has given us his word. And we can be introduced to one who will provide for us everything that we need. All of our needs can be supplied by God's plan. God provided his son to die on a cross. 1 Corinthians 1 and 30 says, It is because of him that you are in Christ Jesus. It has become for us the wisdom of God, that is, our righteousness, our holiness, and our redemption. Christ came to be my righteousness, my holiness, my redemption. And it's only through him, regardless of what I may think, regardless of what I might 
can all say, well, this is who I am. Well, who am I? I'm a sinner who needs God. I'm a sinner who needs to be saved. That's it. That covers you, it covers me, it covers the whosoever. A sinner that needs to be saved. And God <coughs> said, I'll send my son. We go through the Christmas season, we go through the Easter season, and we've got the story out of line for us again and again and again. And many people, yes, will believe. Many people will say, Jesus died on the cross. He died there for my sins, so that I might have a renewed relationship with God the Father. Now, others will say, well, he was a good man and all of that kind of thing. And how do I get to know God? Well, there's a lot of ways to get to know God. Well, that's what they think. That's what they believe. That's what they want to say. But does that make it right? And the answer is absolutely not. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And there's no other way. There's nothing else that can bring us into a relationship with God. And so regardless of what we think, we come to know God, we come to have a relationship with Him, and if we don't come through Jesus Christ, then guess what? We are strangers to God. It's exactly that. We can come to church and we can say, oh yeah, I come to church and I, I put in my collection there and I do all kinds of good things and I'm a fine person to have in your neighborhood. Look, you're an alien. As far as God is concerned, unless you've got that relationship with Jesus Christ. You see, we have the privilege, as I read there, to be a redeemed people. To be saved from our sin. Jesus has paid the price. No question about that. The price has been paid. All that's necessary. And you know what? All we can do, and all we are able to do, and all that's possible for any man to do is to accept the gift of God. It's a pure gift. Nothing more. If we're willing to accept that, we can take on the righteousness of Jesus Christ. We can be redeemed, free from this burden of sin, free from our old self-righteousness. Because after all, what's our self-righteousness? Filthy rags. That's what the Bible will tell us. We can, in fact, be made holy. Imagine. You and I, with all the, the, the dust and the clay and, 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 and all of our bad habits and so on, we can be made holy. That's what Jesus said back in the Old Testament. Or what God said back in the Old Testament. What Jesus said about God in the New Testament, be holy as I am holy. Now people will look at that and say, well, that's because, you know, he wanted to leave a good message. He wanted to leave a fact that could be brought into your life and my life. We can trust him. So who do you think you are? Well, more than anything,
simply means that our heart comes to God. And with our heart, and with everything within us, we're willing to say before God, Look, I am a sinner. And I need to be saved. And I'm willing to accept that blood of Christ is put in place and shed for me. And we can have that relationship. You know, in the end, it really doesn't matter what we think of ourselves. Who do you think you are? Really, in the end, it really doesn't matter. But the important thing is, do you know that God knows who you are? That's what's important. It's what God sees when he looks at you. And what is the chorus that we sing sometimes? When he looks at me, he sees the blood of the Lamb. That's it, folks. We're going to sing the chorus and keep falling in love with you. Over and over. That's, that's where we are. That's where we need to be. That's what this meeting is all about. Falling in love with him. Allowing him to become sweeter in our lives day after day.